Game two, round two of the FIDE World Cup took place today in Tbilisi and there were several players in must-win situations after that first game, including Alexei Dreyev, very experienced grandmaster who lost fairly quickly in his first game against world champion Magnus Carlsen. Carlsen played a really good game yesterday with Black. Um, won uh, an end game fairly quickly, really outplayed his opponent very well. So that meant that today Carlsen just needed a draw to pass through into the third round. So with white, very pleasant to have the white pieces when you're needing a draw. Uh, Dreyev played a Sicilian and instead of going for an open Sicilian, Carlsen wanted to keep things nice and steady and played bishop b5 check. Of course a move that he has great experience with anyway. And now, well, bishop d7 would chop pieces off the board, so Drev played um, a move which keeps more tension in the position. Knight d7, so well, obviously white can trade, but he gives up his two bishops. And here, well, there are many moves. Castles is normal. d4 is probably the most popular move. And that, I mean, that's uh, it's quite a um, popular continuation. And for example, white can set up this Marozzi bind. But uh, recently, black has been doing pretty well against this. Uh, for example, with e5 and b5. Well, Carlson has experience of this position with white. Um, but instead of going into that, because I mean, that can go wrong for white, actually, if you're not careful with black having two bishops. Instead, Carlson played a4. So that's a bit of a curve ball. Um, not exactly putting a huge amount of pressure on black, but it's very solid. And I think that's quite in keeping with Carlson's style. It's quite positional. So knight f6, fine. Knight c3, defending the pawn. And, and the basic idea is that if black plays a6, then you can capture on d7 and play a5 and get some control over the b6 square. Not that this is fatal, but it can mean that, for example, white may be able to break black's pawn structure with e5. And after this trade, then the c pawn is sort of isolated because these these pawns are fixed here. So that's one of the ideas. Black plate g6 and Carlson played a5 here. So continuing with, with this strategy and again a6 would lead to similar positions that I just mentioned. But Drev just ignored that. Carlson has actually reached this position before in um, I think a blitz game against uh, Topalov, played in Paris 2016, and Carlson castled there and, well, got a, a reasonable position. Um, I mean, the position is about equal. But in today's game, he played a6, which of course, positionally is quite correct. Um, if b6, well, that doesn't look too good after bishop c6 and, and knight b5, for example. Um, so, well, of course, black can take. Now the a-pawn is isolated. I think the point is that white risks absolutely nothing by doing this. Th this is not fatal for black having one isolated pawn. Um, but white is so incredibly solid. I think it's it's hard for, for black to generate sort of really serious counterplay here. Anyway, in this position after a6, Dreyev castled. And castles from Carlson and e6, d3. Very unpretentious moves. And now Carlson took as the a pawn was on prize. So there is an isolated pawn, but how one attacks that at the moment is very hard to say. So it's a, you could say that white has a symbolic advantage, but that's about it. But basically white is just very, very solid. Rookie one, Carlson awaits events. There's no need to force things here. White has 
a very pleasant pawn structure. And here Dre have decided to go for the d5 break. At the moment black can't play d5 because of e5, then the knight moves and bishop takes knight. So that's why Dre have played rook d8 to protect this knight and then he can go for d5. Um, I think it's a reasonable way to play, but the move I quite like here is knight b8. At the moment that knight is poorly placed, but if we switch it to c6 and to d4, then actually black is, I think, fine in that position. Um, I mean, white, white, I mean, white is also fine here. <laughs> you know, white has a slightly superior pawn structure, but um, I don't think black will have any significant disadvantage once once the knight comes to c6. But instead, rook d8. Bishop a4 from Carlson, just getting the bishop away from the queen. h6, so a bit of waiting going on, and h3. And now finally d5. And it's possible for Carlson just to wait here. One could play queen e2, for example, and just to await events. But instead, he saw that he could fix the pawn structure. And once the pawn structure is fixed, then it's easier to determine where your pieces are going to play, go, go to. So he played e5, and now the game, in some senses, takes on the character of a French defence, at least for a, for a couple of moves. So the knight is attacked and moved to h7. And now bishop takes knight and d4. So that bishop, in fact, wasn't doing very much, so he chops it off for that knight, which, after d4, could have found um, a useful square on c5 and potentially e4. So that's why Carlson exchanged it off and only then played d4. And this is a pretty safe kind of French structure for white because it's very hard for black to challenge that d4 square. And with d4 blockaded, uh, then, or I should say the d5 pawn blockaded, then that bishop is somewhat shut in. So white has very good control over these dark squares. Pawn takes pawn from Dreyev. Now, Carlson could play knight takes pawn here. Um, then maybe knight g5 looking to come into e4. So white would probably have to trade that off and then play queen d2. And, well, I prefer white here, but the position could become double-edged. But that's another way for white to play, no doubt. Instead, Carlson played knight e2, and this is attempting just a massive clamp on the position, because if white can now play knight takes pawn, then, for example, that move knight g5 simply isn't possible. And the, the knight could be guarded by c3. Um, white, I think, would, would have a... a clear advantage well for example let's 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 play a5 let's let's see knight takes and now bishop here well if the queen goes back then h4 and you can see these dark squares are pretty weak um you know there's going to be queen d2 um maybe the chance to play the, the knight round to g4 as well after h5 of course um, very pleasant position indeed for white. Black is so passive there. Um, so let's go back. So Dreyev wanted to play more actively. Um, he played d3 and he must have been pinning his hopes for counterplay on this move. And the idea is that after this, well of course he doesn't want to allow uh, knight d4, but he plays d4 and this opens up that light squared bishop. Carlson takes the pawn, and he's pretty solid in the centre. Of course, if bishop takes knight, then queen takes, and that can't be captured because the rook is on prees. Um, so Drev played g5. Carlson played c3 to support the knight, and now Drev spins the knight round to g6. So he's looking for counterplay. He's 
looking to attack the pawn on e5, and that knight also has possibilities to come into e4, uh, to f4 or h4. But Carson plays very well. He thought for about uh, 14 minutes here and came up with knight h2. And the point is that after knight g6, the queen comes to g3. Now, this is an excellent square for the queen. Supports the e-pawn. But also starts to look in the direction of black's king. Um, and, well, if black does nothing, then you know, knight g4 could come and potentially in here and, you know, don't forget about f4 and h4 breaks for white under the right circumstances. So knight h4 from Drev, he has to react quickly. Attacking the pawn on g2, <clears throat> therefore knight f3 to block the diagonal. And here is the crunch moment in the game. Carlsen said afterwards, that he was expecting the exchange sacrifice with rook takes knight. And he said he felt a little bit uncomfortable here. So, for example, after pawn takes, um, well, two possibilities could play knight takes and queen takes pawn, but probably white is doing okay here um, because after king h2, f4 or h4 are going to come and rook g1. And actually, it's white that gets. Uh, potentially an attack on black's king. Um, instead, probably in this position, bishop takes knight is better. Queen takes f4. Again, white has counterplay against black's king. And as Carlson mentioned, that he felt he was probably going to be okay because that rook guards this important f3 square. So white should be doing well, but it's tricky. But instead, Drev, after 20 minutes, basically backed down. That must have been his original idea, but instead he bottled it. And after this, I played rook d3, which well, at first glance doesn't look too bad. You know, a bit of pressure here, active rook. In fact, after h4, this is a horrible position for black because white's queen, knight, bishop and h-pawn are all looking at black's king. And this queen is just across the other side of the board and in no man's land. Black's king lacks defenders. So pawn takes pawn. This is how the game went. It's very hard to suggest improvements for black at this moment. Again, at first you'd think this looks okay, but this queen is kind of on its own attacking against black's king. Um, you know, there's a threat to play... Well, uh, let's see. If if rook f5, then uh, just rook e3. Um, and that rook can, can spin over. Well, that blocks um, the queen, and then you're threatening to play queen g4. So black is actually lost here. Uh, Drev tried f5. This was taken. And now the winning move, king h1. The only move that wins, but quite sufficient with the idea rook g1. Very neat. If queen takes f2, let's just show this check. And that wasn't too difficult. Uh, one last tricky variation for Carlson to calculate, and that's queen b7, which first glance looks terrifying, but actually after check, discovered check here, but very simple move, king h2. And now that'll be the end in a similar way to last time. It'll lead to mate with all checks. And if rook g4, then we can take and rook number two comes over. And once again, that is absolutely fatal. So uh, a very um, clear win for Carlton in that match. Um, downing Dreyev by two to zero. So Carlson goes through uh, very easily into the third round. There were a couple of upsets today, including 
Vishwanathan Anand, who has been knocked out by um, Canadian player Kovalyov. Um, if you want all details of the results from game two of round two, then do check out the news section on chessbase.com, where we have detailed reports, analysis and photos. Thanks for watching.